What's up, everybody? It's me, Chris. Once again, here to break down this weekend's HBO Boxing After Dark card. Uh, let's see. First off, we got Vicious Victor Ortiz against Mighty Mike Arnautis. I believe it's pronounced. Anyway, <clears throat> Victor Ortiz has a record of 23-1-1. He's coming off a second round TKO over Jeffrey Resto. Um, Arnautis records 21 wins, two losses, two draws. He's coming off a unanimous decision win over a guy with a record of 11 and 7. So, you know, not exactly the most stellar opposition in his last fight out. Uh, haven't seen a lot of Victor Victor Ortiz to be honest. No, he's an aggressive fighter. Um, kind of a I don't know if he's more of a brawler than a pure boxer, but I definitely think that Arnotis is the more uh, technical boxer in this matchup. Um, to be honest, I've never been too impressed with Arnotis. I know he's a pretty skilled boxer, you know, but I've just never been too impressed with him. The one fight I did see him in that I thought he would do better was the Kendall Holt fight a couple years ago. But that turned out to be a really um, just lackluster fight and uh, by both fighters, to be honest. But Arnaud just lost that fight. Um, I don't know. All three of these fights, I think, in a way, they're kind of made for a certain fighter to win. The Golden Boy fighter. I guess the fighter that's promoted by Golden Boy Promotions. But I think this fight, in that way, is a more favorably matched up to Vicious Victor Ortiz. Uh, int uh, note about this fight, both guys are southpaws, so that could make for a good fight or um, a very awkward fight. Hopefully it'll be uh, entertaining. Anyways, I think Ortiz is going to come out, be the more aggressive fighter, try to really establish himself. Arnudis should be able to, you know, counter effectively being as he's a better boxer, it's just I don't know if he has the um, firepower to keep Ortiz off of him. So, you know, it'll probably go all 12 because Arnudis, I've never seen him get uh, stopped. You know, he seems to be able to um, hold his own in there. But I don't think he's going to win this fight. Not saying he can't. Uh, it's hard for me to say who the better boxer is. Being as I haven't seen much of Ortiz. But I'm going to go with Ortiz by decision. Um, like I said, I haven't seen too much Ortiz, so it's really hard to make a definitively say how this fight's going to go, but I do see Ortiz winning by being the aggressive fighter, landing the harder punches, and just um, controlling the fight for the most part. Next up we have Robert Guerrero against... Oh, sorry if I pronounced this name wrong, I never heard of this guy. Uh, Daud Sino Jordan. He's a fighter from Indonesia. Apologies if I mispronounce his name. Uh, Guerrero, 23-1-1 against Jordan. He's got a record of 23-0. He's undefeated. Guerrero's coming off his first round TKO over Ed L. Ruiz. That was his first fight at the junior lightweight division, moving up from featherweight where he was the champion. Before that, he had a really exciting fight or a good performance against Jason Litzow. Uh, Jordan's coming off a TKO win, second round TKO over a guy with a record of 3-12. So, to say his uh, previous fight wasn't over the most uh, sturdy opponent would be an understatement. Um, Jordan's had all of his fights in Indonesia, all but two fights. He had one in Singapore and one in the United States, so I don't think he's had quite the level of opposition that Guerrero's had. Uh, Guerrero does have the one loss, but he came back and avenged that loss, I believe. Either that or the guy he lost to tested positive for Roy's and he ended up getting the title, but I do think he avenged that loss. Anyways. Um, in this fight, I think this is Guerrero's fight. Uh, obviously, I've never seen uh, Jordan fight, so I can't really break him down at all. But um, as I said earlier, I think Golden Boy is trying to showcase their fighters on this uh, card, and Guerrero's newly signed to them. And I think this is, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's seen Jordan fight. I didn't look up to see if he has any videos on YouTube, any fights, but the fact of the matter is Golden Boy obviously knows the opponent they're, sitting, they're putting him in with. Somewhat like um, Kodo Jennings, where no one had seen Jennings, but Top Rank obviously knew what they were doing in matching up that fight. And I think the same is done here. Um, Jordan is undefeated, so, you know, he must have some ability. And uh, he must, I don't know if he has a good chin or not, but um, I'm going to give him from the benefit of the doubt and say that he'll be able to get to a decision. But I do see him losing. 
I think Guerrero, he's a, he's a really, he's a pretty exciting fighter. He's an aggressive fighter. Fights got kind of a typical Mexican style, somewhat reminiscent of Eric Morales to me, although not as, not as uh, skilled as Morales in my opinion. But that's just who he reminds me of when he fights. But I see Guerrero winning this fight either by a unanimous decision or by um, some kind of a stoppage. But once again, very hard to call because I've never seen Jordan fight. But I do think Guerrero's going to win this fight. Either way. Next up, we have main event. We have James Kirkland against Joel Lovechild Julio. Uh, Kirkland's 24 now with 21 KOs. Julio is 34 and 2 with 31 KOs. Kirkland's coming off the 8th round TKO over Brian Vera. Pretty exciting fight. Pretty much beat Vera down that whole fight. Uh, Julio's coming off a unanimous decision loss for the WBO title against uh, WBO 154-pound champion Sergey Zerzuriak. Sorry if I mispronounced that name as well. Um, and that fight was in uh, Germany. Um, Sergey's country that he fights out of. So have to give credit for Julio for going over to take that fight, but he did lose. But to be honest, that's not really that bad of a loss because, um, as I said, Sergey is the champion and he's 36 and 0. So it's not really a loss you can, you know, hold too much against Joe Julio. I think he just got outboxed. I didn't see the fight, but most likely it sounds like he just got outboxed to a decision. Um, Julio's only other loss is to, to Carlos Quintana, a fight where he was um, just completely outboxed. Quintana boxed circles around him, even knocked him down, I believe, in that fight. So it appears that Joe Julio's weakness is against uh, guys that are better boxers than him. But he doesn't have to worry about this fight in Kirkland, as far as technical-wise. Kirkland is a very raw fighter, very aggressive, very powerful. Somewhat reminiscent of a... Um, early Mike Tyson or a Jeff Lacey, but not as uh, technically refined as those two fighters are. This should be a really explosive fight. Obviously, both guys have a lot of KOs. Although, um, with Joel Julio, his record may be a little bit deceiving as far as how many KOs he has. I remember watching uh, Showbox last weekend, and they were showing a list of Colombian fighters that have a lot of KOs when they came to America, you know, had huge um, KO percentages on the records when fighting in Colombia, but once they got to the U.S. or stopped fighting outside of Colombia's, they didn't have nearly as many knockouts. So Julio may have had a lot of KOs early in his career, but um, he hasn't had as many recently, although he still has 31 and 34 fights. Um, I think that Kirkland is the stronger fighter here. I do think um, he's more powerful and more aggressive. I think Julio is a better boxer, better technically, technical-wise. Um, Kirkland, he has a good trainer in Ann Wolf. She trains him kind of an old-school style. But the problem is... He doesn't have the best of defense. He's pretty easy to hit. And I don't think training with Ann Wolf that's ever going to really improve. Um, no, dis, no disrespect to her. I just don't think that's her specialty as far as training a fighter. I don't think she's going to be able to train to be a good fighter technically or be able to sharpen up his defense so much to a point where you know it won't be somewhat um, a detriment to him in a fight. The question is, can Julio exploit these, exploit these deficiencies, You know, use them to his advantage, and win this fight either by a knockout or a decision. Um, I think he can. I don't know if he will or not. You know, <laughs> really hard for me to call this fight. This fight, um, unlike the other two, is a tough call. Almost probably 50-50 in my opinion. Everyone's on the Kirkland bandwagon because he's been really uh, blowing guys out, just aggressively destroying fools. Like I said, reminiscent of a young Mike Tyson and Jeff Lacey. But he has been hurt before. He has been stunned before, and I think Julio's got the capability to do both those things. Whether or not I think Julio can stop him is another question. But I also don't know if Kirkland can stop Julio. Um, I have seen Joel Julio stunned before in a fight by uh, lesser punchers than James Kirkland. So I do think that he can be stopped by Kirkland, but you know it's really hard to say if that's going to happen or not. You know, this is a tough fight to call. I think they're really going to go at it. I think Kirkland's really going to try to get him out of there. Because I don't think that Kirkland could... I think if it goes to a decision, I think I would probably pick Joel Julio. I think if it goes that far, I think it would be because Julio controlled most of the fight. Also, we haven't seen Kirkland really go that late in a fight that often, so I don't know how good his uh, cardio is. Although I'm sure it's pretty good, because like I said, he trains pretty hard. And Wolf has him training really hard, usually. Um, I'm going to go... I don't know who the favorite is here, but I'm going to go with Joel Julio. You know, he has two losses, but like I said... There are two losses to quality opponents. Um, Kirkland is a good fighter, very aggressive, but like I said, he does have a lot of uh, deficiencies in his defense. 
and I think Joel Julio is going to be able to exploit those and possibly get a late TKO or get a decision win. So, I mean, Kirkman could very well win this fight just as well. He could hurt Julio and stop him. That's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities, and it's probably a very likely scenario. Not very likely, but, you know, this is a 50-50 fight, in my opinion. So, I'm just making a case for either guy. But, if I have to pick a winner, I'm going to go with Joe Julio by decision or late stoppage. Maybe not even late stoppage. Like I said, Kirkland has been caught before. Julio does have power. If he catches him, he can not hurt him, and uh, he may be able to finish him. But, I'm going to go with Joe Julio by decision. Anyways, either way, it should be a pretty exciting night of fights. If not the... Uh, most evenly matched up aside from the main event. I'm probably back on Sunday to give my thoughts after. Let you know, let you guys know what I thought. But uh, until then, I'm out of here. Bye.